it's just so important to know that she had like something happened to her and the thirst of Jesus invaded her heart and, and captivated her and lit her on fire. And she said yes to this. She, her whole life came in, into agreement with the love of Jesus that was real every single day. So when she entered prayer, especially when we're talking about this, like she was in this relationship, Jesus was overwhelming her and she allowed herself to be open to that. Um, but it's him. And she knew that. And when you would come into her presence, you're like, whoa, something's different about you. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey I'm little Father little Mark Mayer. Hey, everybody. Father Innocent. And I'm Brother Colby. Brother Colby. <laughs> Soft-spoken Brother Kobe. <laughs> yeah, welcome back, Brother Kobe. <laughs> welcome. Yeah, why don't you help set him up just a little bit more? I didn't set you up for success. I didn't check. A little bit. Maybe right. to your left a little bit, unless Chris told you something different. That was good. Look at you. That's good. Great. How right. you doing, Brother Kobe? You all right? I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking like a leaf. <laughs> Brother, we had a little scheduling mishap, and there was it was just going to be Father Innocent and I. Oh, and that's why I'm here? And Brother Colby, because this is the day we record is one of Brother Colby's few days to work on habits. Yeah. Right? Yep. Monday's habit day. And so I tried to protect that, <laughs> but we we needed backup. <coughs> so thanks for being a part of it, Brother Colby. It's good to be here. It was very close to me and Father Innocent doing this episode by ourselves. It was like almost two years ago was the last time we did that and kind of made the decision that if we can avoid two people only two people we should avoid that at all costs and so you here you are and it's okay bro especially if it's just you two you know? yeah, yeah i mean it's, <laughs> it's boring boring, boring. <laughs> and we've been the most faithful to this podcast i don't think we've ever missed one you everybody else is gone but we're never gone well i don't want to i don't want to play that game <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> just kidding <laughs> but brother colby we're really happy you're here you you know you're a fan favorite everybody loves you and we <clears throat> you said that it'd be okay to tell people but you said you're nervous <laughs> extremely <laughs> but it's okay we're just gonna be together we're just gonna hang out yeah shaking like a That's leaf right. it was the general last general chapter which is the meeting when all the friars get together yeah in final vows and brother colby went up to say something and he began by saying i'm nervous I'm sh shaking, shaking like, like a leaf, leaf up here <laughs> in the wind, <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> but you're doing great well, hopefully it's the holy spirit <laughs> that's right <laughs> you're doing great uh so anyway we are when you're listening to this episode all three of us, actually, that's providential. That's All three cool. of us are going to be in the desert with the postulants. Yeah. Which is going to be awesome. That's exciting. So actually, if you want to just, when you hear this, you can pray for us while we're doing whatever we're doing. The The word on the street is it's extra watery. Like there's a lot of water. Yeah. So we're going to do a lot of what canyoneering and pray for Father Mark Mary. He, he's <laughs> like, he was, he, like he was strong. He had a strong presence, but it just, just hard for him. <laughs> Yeah, pray for me while yeah. I have to deal with sharing a room with these guys. Sharing Father a room, yeah. sharing, a, sharing a tent. tent. Father Innocent's nighttime routine. <laughs> ten, um, min ten minutes. At least. At least. But um, I think people would that. appreciate that <laughs> Brother Colby likes to turn his headlamp on and he likes to do the flashing thing on the headlamp. A little dance party. A little would, dance party. You would too if you had 10 minutes before you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of fun, but it's... Uh, I'm just kidding. You, did, you guys all did great. So it's fun. This is our second time together as a team. Yeah. Brother Colby, this is your third time? Third time. This is my fourth time. I can't believe it. That's a... This, I just feel like I'm maybe getting a little old for yeah. this. Nah. <laughs> and the good news is that... Uh, yeah, you can't say that to Brother Colby. Brother Colby's got a few years on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro, we got to take care of you in the well, desert. Six years sure. ahead of you. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But uh, what was I going to say? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, the good news is we, because our whole group, because we have 12 postulants, three friars, two, three wilderness guys, we're going to be 18. And for a minute, we thought the permits for the backcountry didn't cover that many guys that we we're going to have to split up, which would have been interesting. But I think we're, yeah, it's all going to, it's all going to work out. We're going to be together. Yeah. Thank God. First, let's just say this. Okay. Number one, my, <coughs> my problem with the trip last year, day 18, was not that we got wet. It was that it was unnecessary and a silly puddle that we decided to get wet in to get wet into that wasn't cool wasn't interesting it wasn't an adventure you just yeah i'm, I'm with you <laughs> and you struggle being cold that's your that's your and, like and, thing and, and being, it's i don't like cold water at all that's true 
Top 10 things I don't like. Cold water. Cold water's in that list. Exodus 90? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, anyway, there's supposed to be extra water. And then you just think about it. You get in there and it's like the beginning of a hike and then you get all wet and cold and then your shoes are wet and then you got to walk five more miles and then you got to get home and you don't have any other shoes. It's... It adds a nice element. Last year was last year for the most part, other than our one little thing that happened. It was pretty dry. It right? was pretty dry and pretty like, like yeah, it was, we didn't get a lot of rain. We didn't get a lot yeah. of, the, we never had a windstorm that woke us up in the middle of the night. So I'm, I feel like I've been lured into a, a sense of comfort and confidence. So we're going to get rocked this year. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Remember day one or two oh, last year, man. people, people sprained ankles. That was, that kind of changed the trajectory as well. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Anyway. We just want to—I just want to say hi to all the Poshnal moms. We're talking about the desert. We do have a lot of Poshnal moms that listen, and so that's just fun. And we almost have double the accompaniment on this one because usually we have two wilderness guys. This year we're going to have three and David. If if you didn't hear this, David, who was on the wilder the the Lent episodes, who used to be one of the, <clears throat> the core guides, is now a Poshnal. Yeah, which is awesome. So we're like stacked. We're stacked. We're gonna have fun. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in here. We got a couple of things going on. If you we're actually, this is the very, very, very first time that we're recording out of order. So because of the whole desert thing and people's schedules, we already have recorded episodes for Advent and this are pre Advent. Sin, but, sin by the fire of <clears throat> Father Ange. Yes. As, you, as you'll hear in the future. So that's going to be a funny thing because we can like what you'll be hearing next, next week's episode. Uh, Father Angelus co wrote with Sister Carolyn a, a uh, Advent devotional called Emmanuel and uh, also known as By the Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Father, Father Innocent's Lent book was Born of Fire or Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire or Man on Fire. Thanks for all those nicknames. More consistent with Father Angelus in Advent. It's By the Fire. <laughs> Just By the Fire. So instead Father of Angel. running to the desert, Just gentle and make a little fire, get cozy. Make yourself some hot chocolate, get a little blinky, <laughs> read Born of Fire. Or what's oh, it called? Yeah. By the Fire. <laughs> but it's not called By the Fire. It's called Emmanuel. <laughs> it's called Emmanuel, and you can find it at White Disciple. There's uh, a link below. But we're going to be rocking that for <clears> all. <throat> uh, Advent. I was so proud of thinking about that, just so you know. On the episode, when I was like, By the Fire. Or, yeah, By the Fire. I was just so, so I was funny. pumped. I was just so <laughs> funny. I was pumped. <laughs> <laughs> what we are getting into anything else i'm supposed to say we have merch coming out eventually maybe it's available now um <laughs> pokemerch.com you can go that's oh, the first something. time we'll eventually we'll have some rosaries which i'm excited about uh mm. joseph lynch sister Pos- brother, no brother brother, 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 brother excuse benedict. me brother benedict sister benedict mary mary is making us uh, some some friar type of rosaries so thank you for that but anyway pokemerch.com if you want to check out that and rock some poco poco stuff and you're not quite ready for the tattoo <laughs> there's now three poco poco tattoos if you want to just start small with a little t-shirt yeah, coffee we, mug yeah that's that's all right but brother Colby, you want when you want to do the poco poco tattoo Tattoos? i have one <laughs> just kidding <laughs> that's awesome tattoos of the heart mm. so come on last last week maybe not our strongest episode of all time we introduced mother Teresa. at least that's how i felt maybe because i was tired did you feel okay about it? I just love Mother Teresa, so I just trust in that the the sincerity got us got us somewhere. So if you listened to last week's episode and you thought that was kind of not that good, that makes two of us. Hopefully, it doesn't make fifteen thousand of us. Um, but anyway, we talked about Mother Teresa. I mean, I don't. Know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so here's what we're talking about today. We're gonna t- we're gonna get into three more episodes on her, and today is actually what's so I this is my favorite Mother <laughs> Teresa book, Father Innocent as he very much kind of alluded to last week, has a different favorite Mother Teresa I was going to bring mine just to like... he's very angry we're not using. What's the one that you like? <laughs> it's called Mother Teresa's Secret Fire. It's about her interior life and the fire of her More about prayer. her interior life than a collection of her journal yeah. entries? Okay. <laughs> um, if you want to go to the, the primary source, you can get, you can look at <laughs> Come Be My Light, Mother Teresa. This is anyways, rocked it. And so I've, this... I think I forgot my copy at home. The most marked up book I have of any books I have is Come Be My Light, which I've had for a number of years. But I think I left it at home after I made my solitude retreat. But anyway, so I was going through this one again to just think about what we were going to talk about. And I got through like, we're going to like 12 pages, basically, like the introduction and maybe not 12 pages, 30 pages. And we just got so much. Um, this first one is one of my very, very 
sort of favorite insights or yeah, insights and quotes about Mother Teresa, which is from page 82. So apparently we got a lot further than 30 pages. I just lied, <laughs> I just, I just lied to everybody. It just seemed not that. Did I? Okay, check this out. Okay. Um, so here's what Mother Teresa, here's what is said about Mother Teresa. So, so she, with, within this book, there's a collection of her writings with her spiritual director, Father Van Exum. And uh, he shares this talking about her. Okay. I, and this is because, so what's happening right here, the context is she is asking for permission to uh, start the Missionaries of Charity. She's been on the train. She had Inspiration Day and we'll kind of talk about that. And then she's in this this phase of asking for permission and it's it's a long process, which is actually my favorite thing. We talked about it a little bit on the episode on obedience, but um, this is what he's saying sort of as a testament to her character. I knew that our Lord had raised the nun to the state of higher prayer. Ecstasy as such, there may not have been, but the immediate state before ecstasy had been reached. That had been my conviction vaguely, however, last, last year and perhaps before. The state of ecstasy may be reached very soon as the union with our Lord has been continual and so deep and violent that rapture does not seem very far off. So there's, there's this, uh, obviously this guy's, uh, he bullies, right? And he's very deeply steeped in, in the interior life. And later on the next page, talking about uh, St. Teresa of Avila, it's saying this, there's no record of Mother Teresa experiencing the mystical state of ecstasy. It is highly probable that she did so. During these months, Mother Teresa enjoyed an intense degree of union with our Lord, including imaginative visions, <clears throat> the awesomeness of which, according to St. Teresa of Avila, almost always produces ecstasy. All right, so um, <clears throat> do you want to just explain really quick what we're talking about? What is that? What is when we're talking about prayer and ecstasy? What does that mean? <clears throat> and, and then I'll talk about why we're talking about that. <laughs> or no, I I'm very I. I'm very happy to talk about, to give a commentary on this. And, and, and so the, what I what I foresee is you, we're going to do a bit of a, 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 t- a tell then show. So you're going to tell us about it and then we'll have Brother Colby pray a Hail Mary and go into okay, ecstasy. So this is, I just wanted, to get, we, that <laughs> I just wanted <laughs> to get that movement. So okay, good. If you need to, I don't know what you, what you need to do to prepare yourself. I feel like you can go in and out pretty easily. <laughs> so... Oh now he's definitely nervous. <laughs> Shaking like, Lee. you're sweating, bro. I know. Chris, Chris put makeup on you and everything. You're still sweating. <laughs> it's because the ecstasy is just ready right <laughs> to come. It's burning fire, his bro. He can't fire. hold it in. He's fire. Tr- he's okay, just, it's hot. It's really hard not to levitate. <laughs> we got him. He has a seatbelt on, bro. Tighten Tighten the seat. He has a seatbelt on. <laughs> Make him sweat. All right. Go for it. So I, I don't. I'm not going to attempt at all to give a formal definition of ecstasy, just in case anybody thought I was going to do that. Um, I love how Father Mark Mary asks like deep <laughs> mystical questions. I'm like, you want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm love, I, I, the interior life here. I love, this is, I love being in this place, but I think we're just good to know we were before mystery, right? When we talk about, we talk about prayer. We talk about the interior life. We talk about the supernatural union with God. We just have to be very careful that it's not um, just again, as we, as we guide people, we're, we're going to talk about something just that's not natural. It's supernatural. Right. And so I love, I love talking about this stuff and I love walking. I love the gift of my, yeah, just spiritual direction and all these different things. So, but we're just very reverent and, and it, this is a holy place for everyone. Right. So we're going to be talking about supernatural things. If you're expecting perfect de- definitions, I have a bo- list of books you could go to that are going to talk about it a lot more clearly than we are. But when we're talking about union with God, we, we do talk <coughs> about a journey and we do talk about, um, you know, just again, the context of mother Teresa, we, she experienced deep graces early on. Again, she's one of those people that pr- never had like a huge conversion and there's just the, the life of grace in her soul and, and her union with God and how it develops from when she's a girl through through her time with her first religious community. And we, we see her now that she's just being, being called deeper and deeper into union with God. And, and that maybe that's just the way that I would want to start before we give a classic example, brother Colby, <laughs> just kidding, um, is that <clears throat> when mother Teresa begins or not begins when she continues to, um, to let go of the world and she continues to, to follow after the one she loves, um, something happens to her. Something's deeply happening to her interior life, right? And and so this is, she's being drawn into communion with a person, a divine person, 
right? And so this is what we're talking about when when she spends time, like time in prayer, when she spends time in silence, we're going to talk about her desire for the Eucharist. Um, brothers, something happens to someone when we say yes and 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 let go of the world and and start entering this place of of intimacy with God. So we're going to start to see what that's like: more silence, more desire. Um, sometimes we experience it in our hearts and our bodies with longing. You can have this like fiery desire, right? Um, um, you're going to just start to notice what happens in Mother Teresa when God starts to call her into deeper union, right? <clears throat> She's able to let go of earthly things. She no, de- no longer desires like, you know, human desires, but she <clears throat> she's being led into deeper union with God, right? So when there is this journey, we we begin to, the church and, and the mystical tradition calls it like union, like prayer and, and deeper union. And towards the, towards the, the more supernatural place, we're going to get, we're going to, we call it ecstasy when there is a real sense of a deep union with God, where you, you know, you enter prayer and, and you kind of, it, it's something so deep that happens and you, and it, it's such a supernatural, you're kind of raised to a supernatural relationship. And you're going to see the saints talk about this, but there's something that you're, you are, I mean, we're, I'm not talking about ex, or, uh, um, levitation, but I'm talking about this, this deep sense of your soul being in union. You're, you're raised to this t- new supernatural place, place with the Lord. And you begin to feel that. So we get a glimpse of that. Mm-hmm. That's all I want to say. Or, Ready, set, Hail go. Mary, full of grace, <laughs> the Lord. Stay focused. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I, got, I, have, I have I have words to say. Do you want? To, do you have anything you want? You're ready, <coughs> ready to hit us with? You can go for it. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna explain a little bit of why I even am taking the time for us to begin here and highlight this, right? Um, and, and first of all, again, I think there there's a, a maybe somewhat of a almost like a common caricature of Mother Teresa. And I want to to balance that or flesh it out. So the first thing that often gets emphasized is the is her her interior suffering later on in life, and she can kind of be, <coughs> and it's not bad because she talks about herself even being this like whatever this like saint of light going into darkness and kind of the fruit of her own darkness and all that sort of stuff. Like this was a real thing that she experienced, but it's not the fullness of her experience of the Lord. And, and I think if we take, if we, if we look at that without first this beginning of the, the deep experience of love that she experienced, like, uh, it kind of can give us with a weird understanding of the spiritual life or the weird understanding of who God is. So that, and then a second kind of caricature of her, which is maybe less popular or emphasized in the Catholic space is, um, basically she's like all Martha, no Mary, where it's like, oh, she did all of this work. She helped all of this people. She was so moved by, the, the port, which is true, um, but first and foremost, which we're going to talk about in her own words, her own desire, the reason the missionaries of charity exist, all of that is the experience of the thirst of Jesus, his thirst for her, her thirst for him. And it's driven by this, like an interior reality. And so Mother Teresa, for me, what I love about it is like, first and foremost, what we get an insight into her is, is she is, uh, she's a woman with, in, in whose heart, um, in like, uh, if you will, like a divinely inspired <laughs> thirst for God and encountered God's divine thirst for like a creature and the fruit of that, when that actually happens in the heart of, of a human person, it's, it's the fruit of it is this, is this ecstatic experience. It's almost too much for our nature to, um, to actually hold and comprehend. Um, and also just like in, in a couple of months, I'm going to, be giving a talk at Seek, which is the you know the big focus conference. Look at you! Um, thanks everybody else on the podcast for jumping in and being a part of that. Um, but uh, part of like the talk is just going to be like, is, is Catholicism incredible? And one thing is like, hey, remember, can we have Mother Teresa? We have her life very public, very documented. All the good things she did, all the awards she gave, the speeches, and here we have her talking about um, or talking about for her. Like, <coughs> we'll, we'll kind of get into her own words. Uh, this isn't just something made up. This isn't just um, following again, like uh, a legend or a myth or a, a for like a, a, a morality. It's not in the opiate of the masses. Like she experienced a burning, overwhelming love, 
uh, for Jesus and she felt and experienced his burning, overwhelming love for her. And that this, uh, this reality, this experience of, of profound union with God, the, 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 the actual concrete gift that we can experience in prayer and in the interior life are all real and they're worth casting out in the deep for. And that's kind of where we're going to continue to go. Brother Colby, you back with us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, my heart is just filled with, um, a deep gratitude um, to Mother Teresa. Mm-hmm. Um, like just sitting here listening to both of you guys just fills my heart with all these memories of her sisters. And and she's absolutely beautiful. Like you may look at a picture of her and she doesn't look... To me, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's years of perseverance and parents and service. I look at her as a beautiful tree and then she's just watered by the grace of prayer. And then people, thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of people come to this tree for, for life. And this is the, the, the life of Jesus. And I'm just, <coughs> when I first read her book, Come Be My Light, uh, years ago before I was a friar, I was shocked. Like that she, it was in darkness. And then that she, she was always a light to, like whenever I, I see her, she's radiating with joy. Like, I, I was shocked. I was like, it's just so beautiful that uh, just her love for Jesus, that she's she goes through this and she continues to cling to Jesus, like clinging to him um, when it's no longer felt, no longer seen, no longer experienced in ecstasy, no longer. Um, she just loves him and she stays. It's just, I was blown away by that. <laughs> and then just seeing the fruit. That comes from this tree. It's just so beautiful. Like, I mean, most of the friars have experience with Mother Teresa, Father Benedict, uh, Father Andrew, um, um, Fa- Father Isaiah, you, um, mm-hmm. Father Innocent in the Bronx, uh, serving before he was a friar with Father Angelus. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, and then it's just unbelievable. Like all the sisters, just, just amazing mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> beautiful and just one thing that came up too is like when i did the consecration through mother for through father michael gately and i there's four saints and she was one of the saints i feel loved when i read her stuff like the actual love of god coming from her words <coughs> her quotes how little they are or whatever it is just loved by god and then just to see that she was going through darkness but yet, still, God is pouring forth His love in abundance through through this little little nun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Father Mark, Mary, the the the. I, I'm just I just appreciate you you zooming into like um, and for Brother Colby as well, just like talking about just her heart and and the it's like the tree that was watered and it was watered by love and it was watered by prayer and. I just really appreciate that. Like when we look at the saints and, and we realize we have to be careful because I also, every time I see a picture of her and every time I like read something, like I don't, I'm moved differently than I've ever experienced. Right. And so sometimes we're like, oh, this is, this is just, this person is out of our league. And this is like one of the saints that got picked over a thousand years and they never, they only come around every once in a while. And, and so sometimes I feel very little compared to her. Um, but one thing I just think it's just very, just very beautiful. Like what you said, it's, it's so, it's just so important to recognize that, that this type of holiness, like what's going on in Mother Teresa's heart is not magic. It's not something she did from the outside. It's not something she like put on. Um, it's not, it's not like, like, you know, supplements that you can take and just like be holy, right? We always want to find the answer is it outside or it's just like, we want something magically to happen. Brothers and sisters, mother had this intimate place, this intimate encounter with the living God. And, and it's, it's the love of Jesus f- for her and h- her love for him that just she, she went all in for. She's a mystic because of that, right? The, 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 living, the living relationship of love she had with, she was a lover of Jesus. She was a lover of God. And, and so it's, this, is, this is what prayer is. This, it comes from this place and, and it overflows from this place. And, and that's what, that's where she starts and that's where she ends. And so when we, we talk about on this, we're going to go on a journey with her the next couple of weeks. It's just so important to know that she had like something happen to her and the thirst of Jesus, 
invaded her heart and and captivated her and lit her on fire. And she said yes to this. She her whole life came in, into agreement with the love of Jesus that was real every single day. So when she entered prayer, especially when we're talking about this, like she was in this relationship, Jesus was overwhelming her and she allowed herself to be open to that. Um, but it's him. And she knew that. And when you would come into her present, you're like, whoa, something's different about you. So it's beautiful. Like, <coughs> I'm just grateful because like that's the starting place. And so to understand her prayer, to understand what this <coughs> priest is saying about her is that she was just captivated by Jesus and she was losing herself in the gift of this prayer. And All right, getting fired up. Um, and, and I think that's kind of what Brother Colby said and touched on what you said as well. I said it last week. There is just, um, again, like there's something about her words that speak to me in a way mm. that nothing else really does. It's just profound. Um, so let's see here. This is, again, Father, her spiritual director, <coughs> talking about something that Mother Teresa wrote. He, the, he, his words, she made several requests to me, one to do more penance, which she which she very ardently desires, one to bind, bind herself uh, by a, a vow to obey me and one to pray at night. She wrote, so these are mother's own words, the attraction for the blessed sacrament at times was so great, I longed for holy communion. Night after night, the sleep would disappear and, and only spend, and only to spend those hours in longing for his coming. This began in February, and now every night for one hour or two, I've noticed it is from 11 to 2, or 11 to 1, the same longing breaks into sleep. So mother, right, she's sleeping, <coughs> and she's waking up in the middle of the night for a couple, or being woken up in the by, like, because her, her desire for receiving communion, the blessed sacrament, Jesus being united with him the next day is so strong she can't sleep. Like... That's pretty awesome. You know what I mean? And that's, and it's just, this, again, this is the Mother Teresa we all know and love, Nobel Peace Prize winner, all that sort of stuff. Uh, she's saying in the testament of her own words is that, like, or like her love for Jesus <laughs> was so great that, and so real, it, like, she couldn't sleep, you know, and she was trying to get permission to be awake and pray. Um, pretty awesome, right? <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 conf it, it confronts me, right? And I think it should confront all of us. Mm -hmm. um, like there's just so many different ways to go. And maybe Brother Colby, I just, I'll pitch it to you after this just because I think I just so badly want to believe that like this longing for the Eucharist and, and longing for the presence of Jesus is not just for her or holy people, but... Um, I think she just like had this gift of faith and had this gift of confidence that um, Jesus Jesus just became everything. And if Jesus is really there and really present, um, then what does that mean to just give to, to just just long to be with Him? What does that mean just to long to be in His just to be in His presence? That you would wake up in the middle of the night and just just like just kind of be overwhelmed by this desire just to be. I want to be in the presence of Jesus. And so I, I just like that's just super provocative because I think Jesus wants wants us all to long for him, not just not just mother. So um, just as you you're speaking, um, just Mother Teresa, her faith is just so beautiful. Believe how many times have she must have read over John chapter six? I, I encourage people to really dig into that gospel, John six. I am the bread of life, my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Mm. And <clears throat> just just the fidelity of her to come there every day, expecting Jesus to come, whether she's feeling it or not. And then Jesus is putting these, these are not her, her desires, these are Jesus' desires for her. And like, I don't always want to go to the chapel. I don't always want to go get up and pray. But just thinking the fact that the Lord wants to be with me is is mm. is the fire that he's putting in our in our hearts in our hearts um it's the fact of believing and knowing and believing that 
<laughs> and his desire to be in communion with us is the fire that uh, makes me, encourages me to go to be with him, even though I don't feel it, even though I don't necessarily want to. But, mm. um, um, yeah, it's just John chapter six. Just, Jesus is the bread of life. I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's important, I think, or for me, it's it's striking or a good reminder. It's just, again, the reality of what is offered to us by like the real re- experience of love and being love that the spiritual life offers us. Like that, that that's not, um, it's not counterfeit. It's not secondary. It's not the consolation price to be like, but it's, it's actually, ultimately, it's like ultimately the foretaste of heaven. It's what we're made for. Everything else is sign and sacrament pointing to preparing for the spiritual union and love mm. experience of God, right? Um, and so like poverty, chastity, and obedience, uh, inviting people, accompanying young men who we love and care about and enjoy the postulants into this life. You can do it with confidence um, because we know that's what the Lord can offer them <coughs> And, and what they can experience here is beyond anything else, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think of this as well, because how many uh, men and women out there are, right, like who who kind of desired marriage, right? And, and there's some very particular components of that which are unique. But as that's not happening, um, there might be this like, like, does that mean that I'm never going to experience love? And and the, and I think what Jesus is telling us here and remind us like that's not whether or not you can experience love and being loved and and the fullness of that type of relationship that's not um that's not dependent on a particular state in life you know <coughs> but this is something real that the Lord offers you and so I think that as well like Mother Teresa in this uh, hopefully is a source of hope and encouragement for those who who because of the state in life not coming together are wondering whether or not like the fulfillment of that deepest desire of their heart is also not going to, is like, is lost. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's true. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm going to pivot directions here unless, is that okay? Well, I have, can I just Go for it. Something? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, so th- this is going to just kind of, just kind of re maybe repeat or rephrase something we talked about when we talked about um we we did the book on conversion uh, father Haggerty, mm-hmm. and what what one thing that just moves me about mother is you know all the saints are, are commentaries on the gospel and all their their icons into what it means to be holy right and 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 so we we just need to to, to be attentive and let our hearts be moved by this because mother mother in this particular um quote <coughs> tells us that that holiness for everyone absolutely has to 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 do with proximity to a tabernacle. Um, it, it's just beautiful because uh, Haggerty said that like when we grow in holiness, no matter who you are, you, there's this growing desire to be with Jesus in the Eucharist. Like we more and more want to be with Jesus that is who is present in the tabernacle, and we find ourselves just stopping by a church to to make a quick visit or you know, just, just longing to be with them or come early during before a mass or after mass to stay with him. There's a, there's a draw of Jesus in the blessed sacrament. He he's drawing us to himself. And that just, I just want us to, I just want our hearts to be moved by that. Like what, like Father Mark Mary, what you said, what's held out to us in, in the gift of being Catholic, like what we actually believe. I love giving talks on the Eucharist. We do this together during our parish missions. When you just tell people what, what we believe about the Eucharist, what we believe about John 6, that Jesus is actually here, that his, the body, blood, soul, and divinity, that his sacred heart is actually present in this piece of bread, the fullness of God. And he waits for you in the tabernacle and he thirsts and longs for you. And and he 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 allows himself just to be manhandled and broken and and walked by, right? Like he 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 does that. Why? Because he's just drawing you. He wants to be with you and he wants to share this love for you. And and that's for everyone, right? And so, Mother Teresa is just again convicting us, and and that the medicine is is just allowing ourselves to be draw, drawn to him in the tabernacle. And you can you can. And, and brothers and sisters, you won't be surprised that you begin to long for him. He's a real person and he's waiting, right? He's waiting for you. And I'm repeating myself now, but it's just true. <laughs> it's, it's all true. We actually believe that, Brother Colby. We actually believe. <laughs> for years and years, I went to high school walking by this church 
driving on the bus past his church right next in Monte City, Pennsylvania, where um, the contemplative sisters of MC sisters. <coughs> no clue Jesus was there. No idea. And um, it took other faith believers to tell me this. So we have to tell people about this beautiful gift. And Mother Teresa actually visited there in 95. And she um, started that house there. And it's a perpetual adoration chapel there in Monsignor Wassel. And it's just such a gift to have that in a small town, in church, where there's access 24 hours a day. Look for an adoration chapel, a Eucharistic adoration chapel. And I didn't believe at first, but just being in the presence of Jesus and reading um, Mother Teresa's books and just being with the sisters, um, I it's like, where is this peace coming from? Um, and I would go in and there's a monstrance on the altar and I had no clue. <laughs> uh, I go right to the statue of Our Lady and no clue. Um, but just reading scripture, just brought it to life and then reading about mother Teresa's devotion to jesus and the blessed sacrament um holy hour every day um her, her sisters would do as we do too and then i started doing holy hour every day um after work and then jesus just opened my heart and gave me the grace to believe like where is this coming from it's definitely coming from jesus and then knowing my catholic faith better um just fell in love with my Catholic faith. I love being Catholic. <laughs> you love being Catholic? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want anything else. <laughs> so, so many people that help us on our way to, in our faith. Um, so many adorers in that, that blessed sacrament. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So just being with Jesus. So Mark's, Mark's account, right, of the, the rich young man. One of the things that's unique about it <coughs> is that it begins by this this detail that so the rich young man I'm sure our listeners are familiar but I'll just kind of paint the, tell the story one more time right so young man comes up to Jesus uh, like like what do I have to do and so Jesus kind of names some of the basics of the law okay great I've been doing that my whole life and then and then it says right that's the detail Jesus looks upon him and loves him and then he says if you wish to be perfect go sell all that you have give it to the poor and come follow me. And, and this is unique for, for Mark's account. And I think it's, it's why it's personally like my favorite. It's just he, this, uh, he's given him the grace and before, before he's asking him to, to detach from this stuff, he's at, he's like, Hey, look at me, like attach here, focus here. Um, and of course what happens with the story of the rich young man is he, he's immediately, as it says, he had all had that stuff. He, he, he at least internally breaks the gaze with Jesus is thinking about all of this stuff kind of, okay like all that he's going to have to give up and that ends up the inertia of that pulls him back and he goes away sad because of it. I I kind of want in some, in some little way to hold up this experience of mother <laughs> Teresa, uh, the profound love she experienced with Jesus in the Eucharist, this burning desire of love. I want to hold this up sort of as uh, kind of a contemporary experience of that loving gaze of Jesus where it's like, okay, hey, look, there's there's something here for you. Like, look at this. Take, like, be, um, be, be what's, what's the word? Be um, provoked by it. Let this be a, a provocation. Let this be something that unsettles you. Let this be something that uh, kind of rocks some of your, your operating whatever. Like, hey, like, whoa, whoa, like, let's, let's <coughs> look at, um, the fact that you can have such a burning love and experience of love of me in prayer, particularly in the Most Holy Eucharist, that you're not even going to be able to sleep um, because of a burning desire. Like, hey, look, like, look at this, right? And now, like, hey, let's let's th come, like, leave this other stuff behind and and come to me and come follow me. And and I share this part because I think this is this is part of my own interior experience, my own interior prayer with the Lord's inviting me to as well is there's um i think particularly over the years there's just ways in which i've um compromised there's ways in which i've added noise to my life there's way in which i have uh just added things which uh i believe ultimately are little like consolations and little distractions and little things which prevent me from the fullness of what jesus is asking of me or, or what jesus is is asking to be able to give me <laughs> and I experienced that desire, you know, um, to be like more sort of like vulnerable or just real. Like one of the 
I'm the, the director of communications for the CFR. So I run all of our media. Yes, I've been you doing are. it for a few years, right? And and part of what comes with that because of uh, in part filming Father Isaiah's series, we we did this whole shade series on just the like an iPhone basically, which allowed us to do it. But also, right, um, running social media, you it, they're made for these smart devices. So it doesn't have data. I can't make a phone call, receive a phone call, which is funny. But I, <coughs> one of the things that they can do, right, is like you can download podcasts. You can listen to episodes. And so for most friars, if you go on a, a six-hour flight or however long a flight, and now everything's on like smart devices, right, and you don't have any device, you can't plug in and watch the TV, you're going to spend the six hours praying or reading or whatever. Or you're going to go do on a run or a workout and you're just going to be in quiet. And, and, and I, that's actually, I think part of our call and the invitation mm. as Franciscans is like to leave a lot of noise or a lot of space, not where we're just constantly learning things. We're not supposed to be masters and whatever, learning, listening to podcasts so you can make an expert on this or the latest time or this or that, the other thing, but to just have space and silence and to enter into that poverty and that <coughs> that's at the service ultimately of this ongoing deepening conversation relationship with the Lord um, and the fullness of who he wants to be for us is going to be in many ways, the fruitfulness of our faithfulness to all this small stuff. Right. And so I really, so I really feel like the Lord's saying like, Hey, when you, <laughs> when you get on a plane, you can listen to some sort of talk and you can fill that, that all that space, but will you not do that? Mm. And it's hard because like I've been, it's the patterns are hard to break. Uh, mm. It's it's just, it's so easy when you have something easier there for you to do that. And I think that's the reality of, um, so like the, the movement is like, oh, but I, uh, uh, you just feel like the interior, like anxiety or whatever. And it's like, I think for so many of our listeners that the human experience is, um, there's just so much <laughs> out there as far as, TV, entertainment, scrolling, all that sort of stuff. Um, and and is there some invitation from the Lord to like leave, like look at Him, be renewed in the hope, encouragement, what 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 is offered in the spiritual life, and to really be kind of bold in stepping away, mm. and to at least have the conversation again. I think with Mother Teresa in part in front of us, like, hey, look. Like, if the rich young man didn't go away sad, it would look like this, right? You know, like yeah. he would be able to wake up in the middle of the night with such a burning <laughs> desire of the experience of God. Mm. Um, so like, is the Lord and give God permission? Like, Hey, are there things in my life that you're asking me? Like the desire of not just what is good, but what is best for me? Are there things you're inviting me to step away from? And can I receive the grace from uh, your face, your love, uh, your promise, and the encouragement and support of the saints who have gone before us. Padre, I'm grateful <coughs> that, I mean, just to be vulnerable, because like it's real for everyone. And, yeah. and so just, yeah, it's probably the, I, I just, res it resonates and convicts me because it's probably the most worthy battle of our lives to to make a space. Because it, what's, what strikes me, brothers, is that the, the rich young man goes away sad um, because he has to leave a lot behind, but but um but he and and Jesus even looks at him and and I want to say a little bit <coughs> more <coughs> about the look of Jesus but but it, he somehow missed that yes it's it it costs everything you have to give up everything but Jesus intends to give himself to you there's a real relationship right and and that's what i think i just the the hope of this episode is just to remind people that like Jesus, it's not just about clearing space so we can be less worldly, but but there's a holy space because Jesus intends to give himself to you. He intends to give his heart to you. Um, and that's just the truth about everything. <laughs> um, and I, I don't want to get too complicated, but um, I was reading something. I was reading um, a, a Michael O'Brien account. Um, it's, it's from his book. on. It's called Theophilus. And basically the, the long in, or the short part of the, the summary is that um, it's about St. Luke and his stepfather and, and, and it's a historical novel on the gospels. And, and Theophilus, who, who is Luke's stepfather, goes in search of Luke because he's worried about him as he's starting to hang out with Christians. And, and so Theophilus goes and finds him and he starts encountering people 
who who encounter Jesus in real life. And he, so he does these he does these these um, interviews with people in Jerusalem and Galilee and all the all the surrounding areas of people who particularly encounter Jesus, but also who were healed by him. And I was reading the account the other day of, of this of Theophilus going to talk to Jonah the leper. Again, it's 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 historical from the historical novel from the Gospels, and and he asked Jonah what it was like, and and there's it's it's worth reading. But the first thing he says when he tells Theophilus that the, I was I was like leprosy was consuming my body, and I was hiding in a cave, and Jesus came to me. And I thought I couldn't be found, and I was hiding and just getting ready to die. And and he said two things. He said, when he walked up to me, and I was like rotting, and, and no one had seen me for years, he said, I, I will never forget the way that he looked at me. And he talked about his eyes. And then he said this, and I'll never forget that the way he said my name. Like, this is what healed him. And then he, I mean, then his disease goes away, right? But, but what heals him is, the, is just this personal encounter that the way that Jesus looked at him and the way that he said his name. And brothers, this is what he remembered his whole life, right? And, 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 I, and I'm moved by that because that's, that's what's held out to us in this personal relationship with Jesus that he wants to come look at you. Like he loves looking at you. He, he wants to speak your name, right? It's not just like fantasy saint lives we're talking about. Like he desires to speak this way and to love you like this, right? And Mother Teresa went all in for it. <laughs> but this is the desire he has for all of us. To, and so Mother Teresa longs for him and, and gets up in the middle of the night and does crazy things because she, she realizes the way that Jesus looks at her. And the way that he says her name and, and the longing of intimacy they have for one another. This is just God's desire for all of us. There's a quote Mother Teresa um, shares. Um, Love until it hurts. And getting up in the middle of the night, I'm sure it wasn't easy for her to go into the, You know what I mean? She just didn't, she was in love. <coughs> and then mm. you don't fall in love if you don't spend time with each other. And I could truly say that I love you guys more now than I did three years ago, you know, and, and it's true. Um, even St. Maximilian Kobe says, without sacrifice, there is no love. So what, what is some of the most precious things that we have is, is time. Mm -hmm. You want to sacrifice your time to be with the one who has given us time. And uh, how many times has Mother Teresa sacrificed just to be with Jesus, to love him? And one of the little films that I watched where she was, I don't know, she did go to Bosnia or one of the war countries over there, and she prayed all night long <coughs> with Jesus through Our Lady's Rosary, um, sacrificed her time because she loved Jesus. But even more beautiful is that she loved sinners. She loved people that she was serving. Uh, people that are not always that attractive, but this was uh, the children that she was praying for. They're <coughs> disabled children. And through her prayers with Jesus and Our Lady, uh, there was a ceasefire the next the next day. She, she sacrificed all night long love. With Jesus in, with, the, in Jesus, the Eucharist. In the Eucharist. Yeah. Yeah, for love of him. And just her sacrificing her time to be with him is what set her heart on fire. And it stops wars. And stops wars, yeah. <laughs> At least it, it yeah. changes hearts. No, I mean, it changes hearts. <laughs> ceasefire for a day. Ceasefire, but, but it's not nothing. It's no. beautiful. Do you remember? I I haven't been able to find that documentary again. Is that the one we show our guys? It's yeah, a different it's the one, one we show it our guys. It, the, it's, it's called Mother Teresa, and it's called by the Petrie Sisters. Yeah. I just looked it up. Someone asked so me about beautiful. it recently. So well done. And we have a copy. It used to be on YouTube. Yeah, we have, that, a, we have a copy. Yeah. And you're you're gonna ask me if I know where it is. I'm not gonna ask you if you okay, know because I don't know where it is. Where it is. <laughs> I'm false, um, but because yeah, there's a scene where she wants to go and she wants to go and rescue yeah. these kids who are behind and or like in the war zone, who all have a variety of uh, disabilities, disabilities, right? And she's meeting with these dignitaries and the with bishop Monsignor and the Monsignor Effort was there. Um, <laughs> the political figures and like, we have to go, we have to go like mother, you can't go. And she's like, okay, well, we'll have a ceasefire tomorrow. And then it just, the next clip is the next morning with it totally quiet. But that, what they don't show you is that it wasn't that she 
spent the night night. in prayer. Yeah. Love, love does that. Love. Um, Great. How's your cough doing? Pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want another drink? Um, I I was hoping I would get a call from a doctor from who listened for the podcast that someone could call a comment on how I help my cough and Father Angel's cough. Um, you do you generally you're doing okay health wise, right? All right. I had an interesting week with my health, but we don't have to tell stories about me getting sick. All right, we won't do that. All right, um, Mother Teresa. So I I don't know that I have anything else to say here. Is that all right? We'll kind of bring it in for a landing. Yeah. Yeah, I just it's just real. It's possible. I think. What do I want to say? I want to be sensitive too. I want to kind of click, uh, if you will, f- refine some of what I said. If you're experiencing not being in your vocation, <coughs> what I'm not saying is, well, Jesus gave him is here in the Eucharist. Like, get over it. Like, that's not that's not the reality. Not helpful and not an honor, a reverence of our how our humanity works. <laughs> but for all of our states in life, whatever's going on, certain there might be a journey to get that point. As Mother Teresa got went through a a lot of journey and purification. <laughs> But the, the love of the Lord is here and what he can do for us is is real, particularly in this episode, emphasizing though that it, just asking for the grace to, um, to have the courage and the fortitude to take that risk when he's inviting you to take the risk of leaving things behind to um, like push through that and, and to create space for him and that... Um, Again, he's never outdone in generosity and like it, we're not even talking about the same category of type of what he can offer to us compared to um, the lesser, lesser things. It's just, it's just real. And you can pray for me in the desert and you can pray for me as I try to not listen to stuff. Sometimes we have a listener, people who we meet out there who are like, uh, oh, sorry, like I don't listen to the podcast. It's like. Cause like, I don't really listen to stuff or whatever. Like, awesome. Great. You know what I mean? Like it, we're, I would rather you were, if, 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 if you're just praying and being in silence and entering into that sweet, if this can be a source that helps you and encourages you to that. Okay, great. Keep on, keep listening. People do apologize. I'm sorry, Father. I don't listen. I'm like, no, I don't listen. Either. It's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's you listen though, right? Every yeah, week, every week, but <laughs> we, listen. we had a, we got a very nice letter from some religious sisters who listen come on that's like props okay um (laughs) we're gonna talk about uh a few announcements but we'll close with a prayer first brother colby okay in the name of the father and the son of the holy spirit amen amen thank you jesus for the gift of life that you give us thank you for the saints especially for our mother Teresa. we ask you to bless us and bless all those who are listening um, to fall more and more in love with Jesus in the Eucharist. We ask this through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, in the holy name of Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. And Mother Teresa, pray, pray for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son. The Holy Spirit. Uh, bold move. Were you Amen. with us? Did you did you feel? Like I saw him starting uh, to go for a second. <laughs> like, he, I thought we were. Stay with us, Cole. Stay we're, with us. We're getting are... ready for takeoff. Three, two, loco, <laughs> one. That's why we have. No, it's poco. <laughs> if you ever come visit St. Joseph's Friar, you'll see that we have uh, mattresses and pads on all of the ceilings, so that when Brother Colby goes in that, next, to you, he doesn't. That <laughs> is <laughs> really funny. <laughs> like, oh, no, don't don't, don't, don't it's okay. Don't want to do that to you. <laughs> we're all you stop sweating though. That's good news. You stop sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. We have friends over for like chips and sauce and they look up like Where? what's going on up there don't believe oh, it's, just brother Colby. it's just brother Colby. it's a <laughs> thing he does um so next uh advent why disciple emmanuel get it not by the fire but nice to be enjoyed by the fire so that that type of thing just kidding uh and congratulations to me on the very 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 <laughs> <laughs> worst merchandise plug in the history of merchandise plugs you better plug it right if you want some merchandise, you can go to pokemerch.com or not, whatever. We have some awesome shirts. Go hats, for it. And we have some religious stickers. It's all about Jesus. Charcuterie, charcuterie boards. It's charcuterie the best. Boards. 
<laughs> oh gosh. Tattoos. Tattoos. Like, tattoos. Was, it couldn't have been a worse pitch, less enthusiastic. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. Sorry, Rob. Thanks for everything, Where Rob. We're on that I'm one, sorry, Chris. Rob. Weird. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pocomerch.com. Go. Um, I want to say hi to Denise. Thank you, Denise, for sending me this brown, brownstone pancake factory. It. Thank you for your letter, and thank you for this. I'm drinking out of it, and it's helping my cough. Brother Colby is mug brought to us by... Cheers. <laughs> the you Kaiser actually, family. You actually have to read it? No, I'm just the Kaiser family. The Basilica of St. Joseph at... And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm extremely pumped. Thank you. We got some strong mugs in recently. I'm very excited about that. So thank you to Lisa for this LSU mug. I was hyped when I got this. So thank We're getting you getting ready much. to come to LSU. Very excited. Come, one of us yeah, is coming I to sacrifice LSU. sacrifice for you, the things I do for you. You're the best. You're the best. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll Peace see you again next week. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day That God is love That life is short That all will be well And I know